Good morning. We wish you a most blessed Resurrection Easter morning. We're so glad that you could be a part of our broadcast this morning. I'm Pastor Amos Robinson. And uh, if you'd like to learn more about our ministry, you can go to our website at www.arms.arms.cc. And um, also, if you'd like to be a part of one of our worship services, we'd love to have you. Our services start on Sundays at 1030. And our Bible study is on Wednesdays at 7.30. If you like to share a tithe, an offering, a donation, or a gift with the ministry, you can go to our website at www.arms.arms.cc and click on the giving tab. We're so glad that you could worship with us this Resurrection Sunday morning. God bless you. We're so excited this morning. We've already spent time in praise and worship this morning, and our hearts are prepared uh, to to share what the Lord has put into our heart. And, you know, as we prayed and we pondered over what the Lord would have us to share in this morning, on this Easter Sunday, our message is the God of your troubles. You know, we as God's children, we realize that even though as we walk out our lives, that there can be situations and circumstances come up that you could even perhaps describe as troubles. And But our Heavenly Father wants to assure you that he wants to minister to your needs and to your situations and to your circumstances. He wants to help and deliver you out of those troubles. And our text in this morning for our Resurrection Sunday message and our Easter message, it comes out of uh, Psalms. It comes out of our message text this morning, comes out of Psalms, the 34th chapter and the 6th verse. And it reads, this poor man cried out and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. And so if we look here at Psalms 34, and we will widen that up a little bit, we'll go, we'll widen it up a little bit in terms of um, what else? This was, a, this was a Psalm of David, and David was in great distress when he um, mouthed this Psalm, and when he uh, wrote this Psalm, it was, he was in great distress and a very precarious situation that only the Lord could deliver him out of. And the Lord gave him a word of knowledge of what to do. And he conducted us in his way. And the Lord gave him favor and delivered him out of his distress, out of his situation, and out of his, his, out of his circumstance. But, you know, before we get into our message text this morning, I want to, again, wish you a most blessed Resurrection Sunday, a blessed Easter you know, I want to encourage you this Resurrection Sunday that you take heart. I want to encourage you to not only do we celebrate uh, Resurrection Sunday and Easter Sunday, but I want to encourage you to live a resurrection life. Let's look over here at John, the 10th chapter and the 10th verse. Let's turn over here to the Gospel of John, the 10th chapter, and we'll look at the 10th verse. The Gospel of John the 10th chapter and the 10th verse. The Gospel of John, the 10th chapter and the 10th verse. The Gospel of John, 10 and 10, it says, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. And I have come, Lord Jesus says, that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. This Resurrection Sunday, I want to encourage you that you strive to live this abundant life in your heart. And I ask you to ponder in your heart the grace that God has provided for you, his provision that he provided for you, the grace that he could provide that you could be born again. If you've received the Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior, ponder that into your hearts in this morning. As we think about this Resurrection Sunday, Lord Jesus now as we commemorate this Resurrection Sunday, that he, that, that he resurrected from the grave, that he purchased this eternal life for us, that we also could resurrect to a literal eternal life. But I want to encourage you in this morning that you would also live this resurrection in your lives. Our Heavenly Father, our, the Lord Jesus is a living God. And because he lives, he wants to walk with us. He wants to talk with us. He wants to live in us. In other words, and I would encourage you this morning that if you have not received the Lord Jesus as your Savior, that you would do so in this morning. And it's very easy. All you have to do is pray this simple prayer. 
and we'll pray this together. Dear Heavenly Father, I'm so thankful that the Lord Jesus came down from heaven, was bruised, died for my sins, took all of my sins upon himself, and resurrected and came back to life. And then I, through the work that Jesus did, I receive him right now into my heart. I know if I receive the Lord Jesus into my heart, that I've been born again. I've been made new. That all thing, old things have passed away. And all things have become new. I'm alive in Christ right now. In Jesus name. I receive this by faith. I am born again. Into the kingdom of God. If you've prayed that prayer, we celebrate with you right now. That you have been born again into the kingdom of God. And I want to encourage you to live, walk out this resurrected life. We'd like to hear from you. You can go to our website at arms.cc, our phone number there, share us your testimony. But he wants to walk in us. He wants to talk with us. He wants to live in us. And by receiving the Lord Jesus as our Lord and Savior, he now resides in our spirit. He, because he wants to bring us in right relationship with him. He wants us to have a relationship with him. It's an intimate, interactive relationship. He died and rose again for our place to take our sin and our shame upon himself so that everything that we ever did would come upon him. In other words, it would be a, a, a gift of substitution. In other words, we receive the righteousness of God through salvation in Jesus Christ. Let's turn over here to Psalms and the 103rd Psalms in the 12th chapter. Psalms and uh, 103, and we're going to look at the 12th verse, Psalms 103, and we'll look at the, uh, we'll look at Psalms 103, and we'll look at the 12th verse, Psalms 103 and 12. And it says, so far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. You know, as we think, as we worship the Lord in this Resurrection Sunday, we think about how the Lord, through the rebirth, when we are born again, we, you've just prayed that prayer, all your sins have been remitted. And even after we become a Christian, should we transgress, we have access to the blood of Jesus that provides for us that we can be forgiven totally of our sins as they come up. And he separates us from that. The Lord Jesus bore that on the cross for us. And so... As we think about this resurrection life, we want to think about the, the mentality that the Apostle Paul had when he said, and let's look over here at uh, Philippians, the third chapter in the 12th verse. Let's look at Philippians and this morning. Let's look at Philippians. Let's look at Philippians, the third chapter, and let's look at the 12th verse. And this is how the Apostle Paul characterized is living the resurrected life. And it says, not that I have already attained. This is out of Philippians, the third chapter and the 12th verse. Philippians, the third chapter and the 12th verse. And it says, not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. In other words, my dear brothers and sisters, we want to, if in Christ, all, all, all things have passed away and all things have become new. We want to live the resurrection life. In other words, what are the purposes and plans that God has for your life? And that's the resurrection life. That's what we want, we want to press into, my dear children. And you have to remember, Apostle Paul said this, but remember, he was the one that persecuted the early Christians. He was the one that's responsible for some of the early Christians being killed. And he says what? Now that I've already attained or I'm already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that which Christ Jesus has laid hold for me. In other words, he could have a clear conscience that even though he had done some things that weren't appropriate, he had actually been uh, responsible for some Christians even being killed. 
but he could he realized that through the grace that was provided into Lord Jesus that that was passed away and that now he looks forward to what the Lord Jesus uh, had for him and we as God's children we want to live the resurrection life I admonish you in this morning live the resurrection life press into what God has in store for us press into God's grace and his mercy press on and take hold Jesus never said it was going to be easy. It wasn't easy for him. You know, as we ponder, we're just now culminating Holy Week. As we think of Passover and we think of the Lord instituting the Lord's Supper and we think about him being beaten so severely uh, and by his stripes we were healed, but the stripes that he took upon himself and we think about the sacrifice and the pain that he went through, it was not easy. In the Garden of Gethsemane, he prayed three times. He said, Lord, if this cup could pass me, take it away from me. And so he prayed so hard that he sweated blood, such an intense prayer. It was not easy for him. It cost him his life on the cross. But on the third day, which we celebrate today, this Resurrection Sunday, he came out of the grave alive again. And he turned that situation around, which was so terrible that he had to experience, into something beautiful and wonderful for us. That in other words, he was the first of many to come. In other words, that would through his sacrifice and the gift that he provided, we would have access to eternal life. Amen? Boy, that would get you up out your seat and out your pew shouting right there, praise God. And so let's, let's reflect back now on our text for our, our message for today. Uh, is uh, Easter Sunday message is the God of our troubles, and we're looking at Psalms 34. Psalms 34, and of course our message text, I'll share that again. The poor man... The, the poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. You know, sometimes, even I've even shared with my wife in the past few months, I says, it looks like there's failure all, your, all around you. There's failure all around you. There's so many that miss the mark or are not faithful in their walk with the Lord. And you experience these things as a servant of God. And I says, my wife would, would tell you, she would say, uh, I said that to her. I said, it looks like there's failure all around. So many people are failing in their walk with Christ. And think about it. There's problems everywhere. There's, there's problems with a sickness. People suffer from sickness and disease in their bodies. Uh, there's um, uh, financial troubles. A failure in people not walking out their relationship with Christ. There are relationship troubles and issues that come up uh, in families. You know, there's all kind of people have, have, have backslid, have fallen away from the Lord. There's all kind of challenges. People are taking the word of God and twisting it into what they want it to be versus transforming their life into what it should be. Their life should be reflecting the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so we, as God's children, we realize it doesn't matter whether it's a sickness trouble where there's a failure in our walk with Christ, a backsliding, whether there's financial trouble, whether there's relationship issues, whether there's health issues, it doesn't matter what the trouble is. God is the God of our troubles. Any of these situations, any of these circumstances, God is the God of our troubles. Let's look up here at the first verse of uh, Psalms 34 and 1. Let's look at Psalms 30, 34 and the first verse, of course, our text is Psalms 34 and 6. So we're looking at Psalms 34 and 1. It says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. You know, it is always right that we operate with an attitude of thanksgiving toward God. And, you know, even when we're experiencing troubles, it doesn't matter what the situation is, what the circumstance is, what the trouble is. We can always give thanks because we know God is going to bring us out. Amen? Praise God. We realize that God is going to bring us out of it. We can release our faith on the word of God, and God will bring us out of that situation. He will bring us out of that circumstance by his grace. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Let's look over here. Stay at Psalms 34 there. We're going to come back. But let's look at... 1 Thessalonians, the 5th chapter, and the 18th verse. 1 Thessalonians, the 5th uh, the chapter, and the 18th verse. 1 Thessalonians, 
First Thessalonians, First Thessalonians, First Thessalonians, the fifth chapter. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. First Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, and the eighteenth verse. And it says what? It says, in everything give thanks. Now, I've heard this minister that we should give thanks to God for everything. No, everything. Now, we don't give thankful when the devil is moving and causing us harm and trouble. We don't thank God for the trouble. No, we don't do that. We thank God for the solution to the troubles. We thank God that we know he's going to answer our prayer, that we're going to stand on the word of God, and he is going to provide for us. Amen? So we're at 1 Thessalonians 5 and 18. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. In other words, so as we look at our Psalms 34, it says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. In other words, we have a continual attitude of thankfulness and gratefulness and praise the Lord, even in a troubling time, even in a troubling situation. Because when you have a grateful heart's attitude, it really opens you up to receive. When you're grateful and thankful, it positions you to receive from the Lord. If you're in trouble, you need to receive. You need to receive help in your time of need. And as we approach the throne of grace, we want to approach it with this attitude as David had. David found himself in a situation where he was greatly in distress. And this is what he said in his distressful story, because it was really precarious for David. It could have been very bad for him. Maybe in so severe he could have been jailed or maybe his life could have been at stake. But he said, I will bless the Lord at all times in this very distressful, hard place that David found himself in. Second verse, my soul shall make its boast in the Lord. They, the humble shall hear of it and be glad. In other words, David's not going to make his boast in his, in his flesh and what he could do. We're in Psalms 34, Psalms 34. And so at the second verse, Psalms 34 and the second verse, we're back to Psalms 34 and the second verse. So it says, my soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear it and be glad. And in other words, we take, we boast in the Lord and what the Lord has done. We boast in the word of God and what God has promised us. Amen. Amen. Third verse, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. We don't exalt the problem. We don't exalt the trouble. We exalt the Lord in that situation and circumstance. We don't exalt our problems. We don't talk about our problems. Oh, well, I was just with uh, someone the other day, and they were saying something was going on with their ear. And I said, no, your, your ear is being healed. Amen. Your ear is being healed. No, no, we don't talk like that. No, uh, your ear is being healed. Yeah. See, that we don't talk the problem. We talk the solution. Amen. The Bible says, let the weak say they're strong. If you're weak, oh, I'm, I'm just so weak. No, we don't do that. Oh, my ear is about, no, my ear is healed. It's, it's clear right now. Oh, I can feel, it's coming. The healing power is coming, amen. Matter of fact, when the sister touched her head, I said, oh, you, you probably feel the healing power of the Holy Ghost. Amen, praise God. And that's the way it is. That's how it is with us. We don't, we don't, we don't, look, I will magnify the Lord. We're not magnifying the problem, magnifying the, 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 the circumstances, the trouble that has come. No, we're going to magnify the Lord and let us exalt his name together. Fourth verse, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. My dear brothers and sisters, I want to encourage you this morning that we fear not. Fear not. We are not to operate by fear. We're to operate by what? By faith in the word of God. And if we'll spend time in the word and, and magnify the Lord, if you're sitting here talking about your problem and your trouble and how big your problem is and how big your trouble is, guess what? Fear can come in you. But if you're magnifying the name of the Lord and you're magnifying God and how big he is and how great he is, guess what? Faith is going to come. You're going to be strengthened. Remember the example of, of Peter in the Bible, the apostle Peter? When the Lord Jesus gave him one word, he said, Lord, uh, let me come to you. He was walking, Jesus was walking under water. And Jesus said one word, come. Now he took that one word from the Lord acted on it, and guess what he started doing? Walking on water. 
which would seem impossible. Now, what happened is when Peter took his eyes off of Christ and he started looking at his circumstances, what happened? He started to go down. Well, that's what happened with us. If we take a look at our circumstances and focus on our troubles and focus on what's lacking or this or that and the other, maybe we've got a health issue. Maybe we've got a financial issue. Maybe we've got a relationship issue. Maybe we've got a spiritual issue where I want what the Lord is not what it should. And we're focusing on the lack and we're focusing on the problem and we're magnifying it. We're going to start to go down in our circumstances and our situations. But if we will focus on the word, if we'll focus on the Lord, we're going to come up. We're going to rise up. And sometimes we don't understand everything. And the Bible says that what we walk by what? We walk by faith and not by sight. We don't work by our circumstances and situations. If you check an account as low, pull up. If you got online banking, pull that account up. Take your finger and start pointing to it. I command you to be full of money in Jesus' name. Stop speaking to that account. Call those things that be not as though they were. Now don't, now, don't go out and write checks after that and, and, and for money that, like, say, you, you I command 10000 to go in that account right now. Then go write checks. Don't do that. That's illegal. Wait till the manifestation comes. Walk it out. Go out of there and then let some time pass. You release your seed now. Let, let something happen. Give time for a check to come in or, or something to Lord to do something. I'm moving somebody to give you a gift or, or, or uh, by some means to get it to you. But you've got to walk by faith. Don't talk about how bad it is. Don't talk about how, how empty it is. Talk about how full it is. Release your faith into it, into that circumstance and into that situation. Let's look over here at Matthew and the seventh chapter, and let's look at the seventh verse. Matthew, keep your place on, uh, on Psalms 34 there. We're going to come back. Let's go to Matthew, and let's look at Matthew 7 and 7. Matthew, the seventh chapter, and the seventh verse. Matthew 7 and 7. And this is a teaching of the Lord Jesus here. It's kind of a parallel to this fourth verse here. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered from all my fears. Well, the beautiful thing about spending time under the anointed word like we are right now is that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So let's hear, let's see what the Lord Jesus said here in Matthew 7, 7 in his teaching. It says, ask, and it shall be given to you. Okay. So when we find ourselves in troubles, when we found ourselves in situations and circumstances in our life that are not a reflection of God's grace, we want to foster a prayer life with him. We want to foster a connection with him. And I have a conversation with the Lord about the situation, the circumstance, and let him lead and guide you and let him direct you. The Lord can... He is our source, and he's going to get it to us. Boy, we are prosperous in God. Amen? Amen. Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. Now, when we ask the Lord, the Lord may have us to seek out some things. He may ask us to research some things so that we have some knowledge about what's going on. Right? Um, if someone wants to date us, perhaps we're going to check around about that person to see what that how, what that person is like. Maybe we have some friends that know that person, or maybe we know where they, they went to college or high school or, or social. We're going to research that thing out a little bit. We're not going to just take something uh, for uh, face value, if you will. And we're going to check things out a little bit. Or if God wants us to get a car, purchase a car, we're going to research that a little bit, right? We're going to check that out a little bit. Maybe go to, or maybe we have a little one in our family that is becoming an expert on cars. And we can ask the little one about the cars. <laughs> ask me to be given, seek and you shall find. And knock. In other words, typically, and how the Lord's going to deliver us is going to take some action. I remember the Apostle Peter. He was in prison. And he had, they put him in a jail cell. And they put him in a chair. And they had chains on him. And they had locked chains around his wrist so he couldn't get up. And the saints were praying for his del deliverance from this prison. It was basically locked up for no good reason. And so while the saints are praying for him, guess what Apostle uh, Peter is? He is sound asleep in this prison cell. Now, that, that is a sign of somebody totally at what? Peace. Now, he's got these chains because, you know, you're sitting up in a chair and you got chains on you and he's you know, just knocking him out, you know, and just so relaxed. As a matter of fact, 
The saints prayed for him so intently that God sent an angel to Peter. And an angel appeared in that jail cell and called to Peter. Peter was so sound asleep he couldn't hear the angel talking to him. So the Bible says that Peter had the angel had to slap him across the face and wake him up. Buddy, I'm here. I'm answering to the prayers. Now, and the angel told him one thing, gave him one word. He said, stand up. Now, how many times would Christians say, oh, my goodness, don't you realize this is a jail cell I'm in? Don't you realize I went to the court and they got me here and I've got these chains in me? I can't stand up. Why are you telling me something impossible to do? Or they don't just take the word of the Lord. And you know what Peter did? The angel told him, stand up. Peter didn't look at them chains and get into an argument with the angel or the servant, telling him what he couldn't do. Peter just stood up and guess what happened? The chains fell right off. So many times, if we will just take the word and act on it, the chains of that trouble will fall right away. It'll fall right away to the side. But we have to act on it. We have to stay in faith. And it was nice that Peter had those faithful saints him. So it says, ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it will be opened to you. In other words, that's a three-part process. It's not just a prayer, but we have to seek. In other words, if we pray, God will direct us in some way. And we'll seek out what's his direction for this. And then we, we got to do, then we got to start taking action. Amen? Amen. Praise God. We got to take action. You know, we had a, we thought about a situation with our wife. And I was engaged to another girl. And the Lord had revealed to me that this woman was going to be my wife, or that, that was going to be my wife. And so I took action. I reached out and sent flowers. She didn't even know who it was from. As a matter of fact, her she had a, a son at the time, and a, and a son and his cousin, when they, the flowers came, she said, don't touch those flowers, uh, Aunt Sarah, Mom, because there's probably a bomb in them. But uh, those are kids talking. You know, they just... Is talking, you know, you know, kid talk, but that's how it started out. I ended up marrying that woman, and so, but you gotta, you as God gives you direction, you start sowing seeds and you start taking action toward what God has provided for you. Let's go back to Psalms 34. We're back at Psalms 34 now, and uh, we were at the fourth verse, and we're going to go one here to the fifth verse. And it says that they looked to him and were radiant, and their faces were not ashamed. Well, guess what? When God delivers you out of your troubles, you're going to radiate something. <laughs> you're going to radiate success. You're going to radiate prosperity, peace, and joy, because he's delivered you now. What did he say? And delivered me out of all my fears. And matter of fact, it, it was just that he, what he feared, he was able to deliver from that, and he's walking in faith. When you walk in confidence, there's, when you walk in faith, you're walking in confidence. People are going to pick that up. There's something about you. You know, if I was going through that situation, boy, I would be just doubled over. I couldn't be, I would be immobile. I couldn't even hardly function. I'm sorry, that's not me. I'm in faith, honey. I know God was going to provide for me. And so they looked at them and were radiant. Yeah, they radiate the faith. Believe that God's going to deliver them out of your troubles. And their faces were not ashamed. I'm going to be ashamed about God's providing for me, honey. Our text, the poor man cried out and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers him. Let's look over here at Psalms 91. Psalms 91 and 11. Psalms 91 and 11. And Psalms 91 is a very nice psalm. It is a psalm of safety and protection. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, we have to walk by faith. You know, as I as I turn here to Psalms 91, and we're, we're going to look at Psalms 91 and 11 here in just a moment, but I thought about this example in this morning of this sister who took Psalms 91, and she declared it over herself before she would leave the house. And she got up this morning, and she declared it over herself, and she went to her doctor's appointment. And on her way to the doctor's appointment, she got mugged, and her purse stolen and stuff. And so she came home, and she called her pastor. This is in New York City. And she said, I got a problem. And he said, well, honey, what's the problem? I got mugged. You got mugged? She said, what happened? She said, well, I got up this morning like I normally do. And whenever I go out, I, I declare Psalms 91 of myself. I read the psalm and declared myself and went out. He said, well, that don't sound right. He said, well, let me ask you this. When you pray, 
did you feel it? Did you feel any unction of any way? Did you feel any guidance? She said, yeah, I felt like I shouldn't go. <laughs> he said, honey, you can't over, you can't read a scripture and override the activity of the live interactive activity of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> the Holy Spirit alive. You just can't take, so you're reading the word and the Holy Spirit's not responding. You don't go. You shouldn't have went. And so as God's children, we don't just, <laughs> we, you have people who are very, Bible, have a lot of Bible knowledge, but they don't have any wisdom. They don't know how to apply the word or how to be moved by the spirit. So let's look here at Psalms 91, 11. It says what? For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. And my dear brothers and sisters here, as we look at that, the, we look, go back at Psalms 34 and 7. It says, the angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him. In other words, not like that translation fear. It should be reverence him. And why is that important? Because reverence is important because it's when we put God's idea ahead of our idea. We come up with an idea, but when we reverence God, that means we put his idea above our idea. Right? So the angel of the Lord comes to all those who reverence him and delivers them. The 11th verse, Psalm 91, he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. And my dear brothers and sisters, we are, we can engage our angels right um and we want to thank our angels and we want to engage our angels on our behalf to protect us and to shield us and when our angels protect us we want to get, say a thank you it's always nice when you when somebody does a good job to say thank you then we start this out saying bless the lord at all times and we got a grateful heart a thank for it and so when our angels protect us we say thank you angels thank you for helping me today in this situation Okay, let's go on here. Let's look at the eighth verse of Psalms 34. Psalms 34 and 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. And as we trust in the Lord, we're going to be able to maintain our joy. Oh, reverence the Lord, you his saints. There is no want to those who reverence him. In other words, wisdom doesn't ever produce a mistake. It's always right. Wisdom always produces success. Let's pause here. Let's go over to a very familiar verse to us. Let's go over to Deuteronomy 28. Stay with Psalm 34 because we're coming back. Let's go over to Deuteronomy 28. Wisdom always produces a success. It always does. It always produces a success. And it says Psalms, uh, Deuteronomy 28.1. Deuteronomy 28 and the first verse. And it says what? Now it shall come to pass, if you do you obey the voice of the Lord your God, to observe carefully all his commandments which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth, and all these what? And all these what? These blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. Because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. The, the Obedience to the voice of God is only going to lead to prosperity and success, peace and joy. That's what it's going to lead to. We have got to take authority over things in our life. Last for Palm Sunday it was we have to rule and reign over our domains, the domains of our life. We cannot simply, I remember this, this servant, he went and served somewhere in a congregation. And he, afterward, the, the saints come up and greeted him. And the sister told him, you know, the devil been beat me all upside my head. And he said, honey, sister, you shouldn't have let, her, let him go out that far. You should have kept him under your feet. We've got to press in. The devil, if you let him, he'll come in and tear you up if you let him. But we can take authority over that. Cast that thing out, put him back in his place, and take a dominion and authority over the realms of our life or the, or the domains of our life. If you'd like to learn more about that, we had a whole service about that. You can go to our YouTube channel or our Facebook page. The service is there. It's our Palm Sunday message. Ninth verse. Oh, reverence the Lord, you his saints. There is no want to those who reverence him. Tenth verse. The young lions, the young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Amen. Boy, that's good. Let's look here at Psalms 84 and 11. 
Let's go over to Psalms, the 84th chapter and the 11th verse. Psalms 84 and 11. Praise God. Boy, I'm preaching, my, I'm, I'm preaching myself happy this morning, praise God. Amen. Psalms 84, 11. And it says what? For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. He's a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. Well, when he gives grace, we got to act our faith, uh, release our faith on the grace. The Lord will, will he, he, and he provides for us glory. In other words, he provides for his goodness. He provides for us his compassion toward us, his graciousness, his power, and his presence toward us. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. Well, how will we walk uprightly? By following and doing what, the, what we just heard over here in Deuteronomy 28, listening to the voice of God and doing it and walking it out and acting on it. Amen. 11th verse, come you children, listen to me. I will teach you the reverence of the Lord. Well, that's good. When we teach our children uh, and, and we're taught to reverence God, to put esteem him above, above our own thinking. Who is the man who desires life and loves many days that he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil. My dear brothers and sisters, we want to keep our tongue from saying harmful things. We want to keep our, we do not want to have a perverse mouth. In other words, that we speak over our lives what God doesn't say. Okay? If we want to be healed, then we don't talk up the sickness or disease. We want to talk up healing. You can have what you say. Amen? You can have what you say. Okay, let's let's pause there. Let's go over to Mark 11. Mark 11. Let's go over to Mark 11. Praise God. Mark 11, and we're going to look at Mark 11, 22. Mark 11, 22. Mark 11, 22. And it says what here? Mark 11, the Gospel of Mark, the 11th chapter, on the 22nd verse. Mark 11, 22. And it says what? So Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. Well, that's how it all starts. That's how the deliverance of your, your problems and your troubles start. That's how deliverance comes. You got to have faith in God. You got to have faith in the Word. You got to have a grateful heart. You got to pray. You've got to seek. You've got to action on some things. You got to renew your mind to your deliverance. Right? But it says, or have faith in God. This is really the foundation here for deliverance. Have faith in God. Who is God? Hey, Paul, stay right there. Let's go to John 1 1. Keep your place in Mark 11 and, and, and Psalm 34. And let's go to John 1 1. The first chapter, the first verse of the Gospel of John. I know you kind of got you tied up there with keeping track of all these uh, chapters and stuff, but we, we're working through it. So, John 1 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Amen. So it says here, and uh, have faith in God. In other words, have faith in the word. You have to have faith in the word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. For surely I say unto you, back, back and we're back now at Mark 11, 22, and now we're at 23. For surely I say to you, whoever says of this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. So if we've got our, our ears bothering us, we got a mountain of our ear bothering us, what do we do? We speak to that ear, ear, you're healed. I release God's healing power to my ear right now. It's not that my, oh, my ears, no, 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 no. I receive healing right now. I release faith. It's healed right now. Thank you. I think you're clearing up. I think you're clearing up. That's what we got to do. We got to speak to it. Listen, didn't, what he, didn't that what Jesus said here? Well, surely this is Jesus talking here. Whoever says to this mouth, notice who says to my ear, right? Whoever says to diabetes, whoever says to high blood pressure, be removed and be cast to the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. So you can have what you say. Okay, so... 
Let's say this. I'm sick. I'm healed. Well, it's the same amount of effort. Uh, I mean, it's the same amount of words. You ain't, I mean, you ain't, it's, it's, it's two words. I'm sick. I'm healed. Why not choose life? Why choose death? Why talk what you, why talk about what you don't want? Start calling for what you do want. Amen? Isn't that what Jesus is saying? He says, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea. But believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe you receive them and you will have them. And so it's a progressive thing. 20, uh, 25th verse, and whatever you stay in praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive them, that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespass. So my dear brothers and sisters, in this morning, we want to encourage you that have faith in the word. Give the word place in our heart. Let it take root in our heart. God is the, he's the God of your troubles. He's the God of your troubles. It doesn't matter whether that's uh, uh, sickness or disease. It doesn't matter whether it's uh, a failure in your walk with Christ. Maybe there's a relationship that you're in and you shouldn't be in it. Maybe there's a relationship that you're not in that you should be in. <laughs> there's some kind of failure somewhere. Maybe there's financial troubles. Maybe there's relationship issues and things that are going on with someone that you're in a relationship with. God is the deliverer, you, deliverer for you out of your troubles. He's your success. Let's go back here to Psalms 34. So it says, uh, Psalms 34, 13, keep your tongue from evil. Don't talk about the problem. Talk about the solution. And your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Don't do those things which bring harm to you. Do those things. Seek peace and pursue it. You're trying to pursue righteousness in situations and circumstances. 15th verse of Psalms 34. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. Well, ain't that good to know he's always watching out for us. And we've got angels that go with us. And his ears are open to their cry. And David could speak here now from experience from this very severe trial that he went through. And it was really a disgrace. Because here David is anointed king and he's got to act like he's a madman for survival among his enemy. Act like he's crazy. And why did he do that? He acted like he was crazy because that particular society, they thought people that were crazy were near God and they wouldn't touch it. If you were insane in that particular society at that time, they thought you were close to God. Insane people were close to God. So David had act like he was insane for his survival. He gave him, God gave him a word of knowledge of what to do to get out of this trial. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil to cut the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry out and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all of their troubles. Boy, that's some good news here this morning. That's some really good gospel. The Lord hears the cries of the of those of the righteous and delivers them out of all their troubles. 18th verse. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart and save such as have a contrite spirit. 19th verse. Many are the inflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them, delivers them out of them all. The Lord wants to totally and completely set us free. Set you free, my dear brothers and sisters. He guards all his bones. No one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous shall be condemned. We just, we just were reminded recently about uh, Moses and how, his, how the Lord, uh, through Moses, delivered the Israelites out of Egypt, and how plague, 10 plagues were brought upon the people. And even after these 10 plagues, finally after the 10th plague, Pharaoh let the people go, but they pursued them, even he repent, he re repented of, of releasing them and went after them. And of course the movie portrayed that 
Pharaoh didn't get killed, but Pharaoh and everybody up in there got killed that were pursuing them. In other words, evil shall lay, slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous shall be condemned. The Lord redeems the soul of his servants, and none of those who trust in him shall be condemned. My dear brothers and sisters, I want to assure you in this morning that you, I want to encourage you that the Lord is, God is the God of our troubles. The Lord is the Lord of our troubles. He's the Lord God of our troubles. And we want to operate with a grateful attitude toward God. And we're not grateful for the trouble, but we're grateful for the deliverance. Amen? Praise God that God is going to deliver us. He's going to meet our financial need. He's going to heal us in our sickness. He's going to heal relationships, right? Now, that doesn't mean that we become fools or stupid. We operate in wisdom of God. We love everybody. We love everybody. We want to be reconciled to everybody. But does everybody necessarily want to be reconciled to us? No, not necessarily. Have, do we have control over whether people want to be reconciled to us? We have control. But can we, do we have control over ourselves? Amen. We're not to operate in hatred toward anyone. We don't hold grudges against anybody, but it doesn't mean we're going to be in relationship with everybody either. Amen? How can two walk together unless they agree? So we want to operate in this morning. Our Easter message, our Resurrection Sunday message is the God of your troubles. And so we want to operate with a grateful attitude toward God. Grateful and thankful that even in the midst of that trouble, we got our, we're praising God. Bless the Lord all the time. I will bless the Lord at all times and praise him continually in my mouth. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. We do not want to operate in fear. We don't want to meditate on the trouble. We want to meditate on the solution, on God's word. We want to operate, conversate with the Lord in prayer. That's what prayer is, a conversation with the Lord. And then we want to seek some things out, research some things, wherever the Lord directs us. And then we want to start taking action, act on it as well. The Lord is our sun and our shield. He's going to, he's going to provide for us grace. And he's going to provide for us glory. We should be, we prophesied this year is a year. Matter of fact, if we, as we look at our, our, our uh, theme for 2019 on the front of our bulletin, this is a year of glory and blessing. A year of marvels, wonders, and extraordinary manifestations of God. This is a year of glory for us. In other words, it's a year of God's goodness, his graciousness, his compassion, his power, and his presence in our lives. The blessing is going to manifest. A year of marvels, wonders, and extraordinary. In other words, things are going to happen for us out of the ordinary. So many times, we as Christians, we get tied up in the order. Well, this is the order of things and how it has to happen. No, God will have to do it that way. As we were reminded just recently here this weekend of God's deliverance of the Israelites from Egypt, he parted the Red Sea. Now, how many times did that happen before? <laughs> that was extraordinary. Amen? Pharaoh thought they had him trapped. <laughs> and, you know, the, people can think that they got you trapped or the devil's got you trapped. God got a way of escape. In any trial, any situation, there's always a way of escape. If we'll stay with God, he'll make it. He'll make it way. It may not look like it, but he's going to make a way. We're so glad that you could be a part of our worship service this morning for this Easter Sunday, this Resurrection Sunday. We wish you a most blessed rest of your uh, Resurrection Sunday, a blessed week. Look forward to you tuning into our broadcast next week. I'm Pastor Amos Robinson. If you... Uh, would like to share a tithe or donation or offering or gift with the ministry, you can go to our website at arms, arms.cc, and click on the giving tab. If you're in a local area, we'd love to have you come and worship with us on Sundays at 1030 and Bible studies on Wednesdays at 730. We wish you a most blessed rest of your week. God bless you. We we'll look forward to you tuning into our broadcast next week.